Welcome back to the main stage. I am so pleased to see that we are filling up as the day goes on. I know a lot of you probably had a really long day yesterday, maybe even a really long night. Did anybody get to check out some of the open spaces in Munich yesterday? Yeah, some of you, how were they? Yeah, I'm getting a thumbs up. Okay, that's my plan for tonight. So if anyone doesn't have plans, I'll see you at the open spaces in downtown Munich. We are carrying on with our topic this year of experience connective mobility. A huge topic for everyone at the moment is generative AI. So I'm really pleased that we are about to take a deep dive into this topic with the general manager, automotive and manufacturing at Amazon Web Services. Please give a warm main stage welcome to Wendy Bauer. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. It's great to be here with you in Munich today. So generative AI we're going to talk about today. Wherever you turn these days, you're sure to find somebody talking about artificial intelligence. Neighbors are talking about how to leverage AI to cut down on email response time. On LinkedIn, you're finding someone is posting their new AI-generated genera profile photo. And in fact, I have to say, some of the professional photos I see these days have never looked better. At home right now, your children may even be using AI to assist with homework completion. And in every industry around the world, companies are laser-focused on finding the high-value use cases to deliver new benefits, value, and experiences to customers. Despite technology companies like AWS, who've been working on AI for more than 20 years, and automotive companies who are now using AI and machine learning in systems such as autonomous development and ADAS, I have to say that the talk surrounding AI has never been different, than, or never been more urgent than it is in 2023. Adapting AI suddenly is feeling critical. It's pressing and it's urgent for the industry. I have spent the entirety of my nearly 30-year career in the automotive industry across OEMs, tier ones, and technology providers. My role with AWS provides the, me the opportunity to engage with customers who see the power of data, analytics, and AI, and just how it is already transforming their businesses. I believe that we need to harness that same sense of AI urgency that we are all feeling right now to accelerate our transformation together. Though our industries have proven that we know how to work together, now I believe that we need to collaborate at an entirely new level. As we go through today's session, I want you to think about this. Does collaboration need to look different for the future of mobility? So let's talk about the future. Yesterday, you heard from Catherine Renz and our customers at BMW in Toyota Gazoo Racing. They highlighted ways that AWS is already helping the industry tackle its current challenges with some specific use cases through enabling sustainable mobility and are focusing on getting to net zero emissions, in enabling and accelerating vehicle technology development, including connected cars and software-defined vehicles, and with emerging technologies like AI and generative AI. Today, we're going to deep dive on the role machine learning, AI, and generative AI are already playing in industry use cases. But make no mistake, what I am going to talk about today and my colleague will talk about, it is not hypothetical. It is happening now. So how are you preparing to use AI, I would ask you? Across the globe, companies are preparing for an unprecedented investment in AI. Leaders know that these advancements and there are critical to their success, or perhaps even their survival. By 2030, it is estimated the industry will be investing 74.5 
billion US dollars for the automotive industry alone. That number is huge. That's a 20 times increase in the next seven years than what the industry is spending today. That numbering that I, number that I just shared, while staggering, is actually only 4% of the opportunity for AI across all industries in the world. The total 2030 investment is estimated to be an astounding 1.85 trillion US dollars. As the industry undertakes this incredible investment, companies across the vast interconnected automotive network needs to collaborate. But before the industry starts spending all of its money, let's pause and actually talk about what AI is. AI is a way to describe any system that can replicate the task that previously required human intelligence. Most AI use cases look for the highest probability outcome and make a prediction or a decision with high degrees of certainty similar to human judgment. Most AI systems that we see today are created using machine learning, which require large amounts of data to create and validate decision logic. Within automotive, we see companies have utilized AI technologies in areas like autonomous driving, ADAS, manufacturing facilities, supply chain, and they have and are reaping benefits. But now, the AI has captured the world's attention and the imagination. Auto companies are looking to do so much more. They're thinking about how AI can transform and enable their entire business end to end by better addressing customers' needs and thinking about more personalized products, by better enabling their employees to make faster and more effective decisions, and by better improving business operations in their enterprises end-to-end. -end. AI, however, is reaching beyond individual companies, and the industry's use of AI is making an incredible impact to the world. By democratizing mobility, think of the opportunity to giving underserved populations the ability to move. If we can do this, AI certainly will play its role in making an enormous impact to the world economy. But before we get there as an industry, there is so much ground to cover. I want to pause and take and provide the opportunity to take a look outside of the industry for a moment. Take, for example, Moderna. Moderna used machine learning built by AWS to develop the COVID-19 vaccine in just 42 days, compared to their typical 12 to 24 months of preclinical development timeline traditionally seen. With Heineken, yes, I know how dare I talk about a non-German beer this close to Oktoberfest. With Heineken, they used AWS's AI technology to improve their mashing process through automatic adjustments of time and temperature. This allowed the brewer to realize significant cost savings, disruptive insights they hadn't seen before, and unlocked unprecedented potential compared to their traditional process. Using AWS, Heineken is now scaling that technology and what they've learned to their more than 70 already connected breweries. And third, TSB Bank in the UK. They recently deployed an AI-powered customer contact center solution from AWS to help improve the customer experience of the more than 5 million incoming calls they have each year. TSB now automatically analyzes every incoming call. This is improving the average call handling time and the agent performance. As an industry, we get to take advantage of AI being at the front and center of our collective conscious, and we get to dream bigger and move faster. Automotive opportunities are out there, and they're already being worked on. So let's take a moment to zoom in on a few specific use cases, beginning with the customer journey. 
AI can help to reinvent the customer shopping experience by analyzing all of the data in the background. AI can make personalized recommendations, for example, for make, model, and trim, based on both previously purchases and real-time current usage patterns seen on vehicles. During the vehicle purchase phase, automotive financial services companies are benefiting as well. They're looking at leveraging AI to automate back-end processing or submission of loan documents. They're also provided with the opportunity to incorporate fraud detection capabilities, all while simultaneously offering more personalized incentives to end customers. In the after-sales area, AI can be used to also support customers by suggesting more accurate maintenance timing and by automatically scheduling appointments. And lastly, retention and loyalty. AI can analyze multiple sources of customer data to create a more complete image of the customer persona. And very importantly, this provides the opportunity to understand that customer over their lifetime journey, as perhaps their preferences change. AI can then recommend highly personalized, out-of-the-box, surprise and delight experiences directly connected to your brand. Let me share a couple of very specific examples of how AWS is collaborating with our customers in this space. First, Cox Automotive, including their family of brands, AutoTrader, Dealer.com, and Kelly Blue Book. They use AI across all four pillars of the customer journey. With AI, Cox Automotive creates reliable, predictive insights for marketing solutions, such as advertising, website personalization, vehicle recommendations, email marketing, and so much more. Cox Automotive has built their identity graph with our managed AWS graphs database solution, Amazon Neptune, using data science to match online and offline data, and to also, very importantly, group data into households. Similarly, BMW Group utilizes AI to enhance their entire end-to-end -end customer experience. Using AWS's AI, BMW creates personalized products for customers, including, for example, BMW Proactive Care, which alerts customers of their vehicle needs in advance of a situation occurring. BMW uses data from its millions of vehicles in its fleet, after receiving permission from customers, of course, to provide a complete customer-centric experience. Now, let's flip over to the vehicle journey. In the vehicle journey, AI can also help in many ways, starting with research and development by accelerating end-to-end -end workflow of machine learning models for systems such as ADAS. And it can significantly expand software and system verification and validation coverage by creating more comprehensive sets of scenarios. During design optimization, AI-enabled attributes like cost, capacity, and material availability can be used to fine-tune products during design times, thus reducing the ultimate number of design iterations that must occur. In manufacturing and supply chain, AI is also already making a meaningful impact here. Predictive maintenance, for example, can be used with guided troubleshooting or supply chain risk simulation, a topic so important to this industry, can be benefited from automated workflows. And energy optimizations and admission tracking, the ability to improve effectiveness around regulatory and compliance reporting. And last, in vehicle experience, a topic so top of mind for all of us, AI can provide a rich view of the vehicle's health including actionable insights for both the customer 
and very importantly, the developer as well. It can assist in, de in delivering an always current, personalized in-cabin experience. And at the end of life, for example, it can provide an opportunity to understand which parts can be recycled or replaced. Let's take a look at a few examples of how we're collaborating in this space. With Denso and their ADAS image sensors, Denso is using AWS's AI solutions to prepare, build, train, and deploy high-quality AI models. By creating a continuous integration, development, and delivery pipeline, Denso is optimizing its resources and managing its cost. In fact, Denso data engineers have reduced hours spent on data management by 55%. And their machine learning engineers have reduced time spent on repeat work by 66%. By mirroring machine learning jobs with Amazon SageMaker, their team has reduced model training time from three days to three hours. And with Skoda, one of the oldest automotive manufacturers in the world, Skoda has used a combination of AWS services to develop MagicEye, including Amazon EC2, S3, RDS, QuickSight, and their own in-house technology. MagicEye is an AI vision technology that provides an opportunity to collect, monitor, and analyze equipment data looking for vulnerabilities to calculate different breakdown scenarios before they ever create a problem. Listen to this. In just six cameras, they're able to collect nearly a half a million photographs in the amount of time that a vehicle goes through the production line. Photos are automatically analyzed looking for irregularities. If found, a maintenance repair operator is alerted who can quickly take action. Prior to Magic Eye being implemented, production could be stalled for minutes, hours, or days. With Magic Eye, however, production continuously is enabled, reducing the risk of lost revenue in production. At AWS, we are excited about the opportunities of the progress that is being made in the industry already around cloud technology in general, but also AI. Even with so much opportunity, I have to say that it's generative AI that is really driving the excitement in the conversations. Analysts estimate that with generative AI, it perhaps will increase global GDP by 7% over the next 10 years. Analysts also estimate that nearly two-thirds of the jobs in the US and Europe will actually benefit from generative AI. I'm sure that you would love an opportunity to hear more from somebody who is very close to de the development of generative AI. I'm very pleased to invite and introduce my colleague, Vice President of Engineering, Bill Voss, to the stage. Why don't we jump into a little bit more about what generative AI is and give you some examples of what's going on in the industry. But, but first of all, I'm always humbled to come here to Munich. I'm a motorhead at heart, and it's really exciting to see what our customers and partners are doing. And I just really love going around the show. So thank you for what you do. Keep doing it. It's just amazing um, for, for all of us motorheads in the world out there. Um, but generative AI, AI, of course, is a timely topic right now. Everybody's talking about it. You see it generating code. You see it generating videos. Uh, uh, but more and more, I think you're going to see generative AI just part of your every day-to-day -day life. It'll be like spell check or uh, AutoCAD and those kinds of things, automatic texturing and those kinds of things, that it'll just augment everything you do and make it, make it much easier and much more effective. Uh, but AI in general is at a tipping point, so I'm going to age myself a little bit. Uh, I, in 1978, I worked on neural networks for autonomous underwater uh, submarines, uh, and the neural networking technology 
uh, isn't all that different today. The, the difference was we didn't have enough data and enough storage, so the submarines got lost all the time. It was a real problem. Uh, and, and so now, though, with things like the cloud, we have enough storage, enough compute, and that's why you see so many amazing things like Alexa and object uh, 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 identification and all the things happening with ADAS and things like that. But generative AI is another turning point that's happening with these transformers. And you might see, you know, I've, I've uh, aged uh, quite a bit since 1993. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I don't look better uh, after five years or after, after the period of time uh, that, that, that it's been going on here compared to, so that is Amazon's website uh, in 1993 and me now in 1993. And, uh, and me now, unfortunately, and uh, Amazon website, fortunately. But you can see how that's advancing. But now imagine, if you guys remember back at that time, it's going five times faster with generative AI right now. And we're all familiar with, with AI going out and like you can uh, give it specific things like uh, the number of cylinders a car has and its age and how many miles, and it can very accurately estimate the value for resale. Uh, or, for example, it can go through and identify a space. So here it is identifying Jeff Bezos uh, on, on, on the way into space there. Um, and uh, so object identification is one of the things we're pretty much used to. But AI is also doing some really amazing things now. Uh, we're accelerating computational fluid dynamics to just minutes instead of hours or days. Uh, and that allows the design cycle for people like Formula One and others, and some of the things you saw with Toyota to happen very, very fast. Uh, and this is like sort of the first edge of generative AI, uh, being able to generate these models very, very quickly and, and predict that. Um, so, but, but the big difference with generative AI to previous AI is actually creating things. So in this case, I asked it to create you know, a Salvador Dali of Jeff Bezos. So it didn't just identify his face, it created it, right? So you can imagine in automotive design that you could say, you know, generate something with a BMW design language or a Porsche design language. I guess, you know, I thought about this, maybe I should go back and generate Jeff with a BMW design language. I don't know what that would look like, but it would, it would be always fun to kind of play with some of these things. Um, so what if I wanted to generate a car? So this is an actual recording of it building a car. All I put in was uh, a sports car, natural background, and uh, a countryside road. And this is the speed, this is running on AWS, this is how long it takes for it to generate that. Uh, now this is in 2D, uh, and, and you can see it deciding what all the features of the sports car are going to be. Uh, you know, and it, it's really a pretty compelling sports car. Look, it's got the, uh, uh, the brake cooling ducts in there. One of the interesting things, it has a split rear, rear, rear spoiler. I didn't expect that. Uh, and I didn't specify electric, so you can see it's got exhaust pipes, so, so bad on me. I should have specified electric. I'll fix that later. Uh, but you can imagine this kind of cycle. Now, this is 2D right now, but 3D is coming pretty quickly. And then you can imagine an uh, automotive designer sitting there saying, wow, uh, uh, that looks great. What's the uh, drag coefficient on that? What's the downforce? How heavy will it be? Uh, apply pedestrian safety standards to it. And eventually, what will it cost to manufacture it? How long will it take based on custom data from, from a specific vendor's manufacturing on how they could do that? Uh, textual uh, inputs, you see a lot of this. This is Anthropic running on us, and this is how long it takes. We fed in uh, an entire BMW manual and asked it to summarize it. Uh, that's not particularly useful. Most people know what a user manual's for, but le legal documents and other things. So, but what if I want to ask specific questions and prompts in it? Uh, I can ask it, tell me about the warranty. Even more interesting to me, this is a 19, uh, I mean a, a 2016 BMW. It had information in the manual about how they did data storage. Imagine with software-defined vehicles how much will be in there about data storage and other things like that. Also, as these cars get more and more complex and have more and more features, um, uh, asking things like, hey, how do I turn creep mode on? For those of you who don't know what creep mode is, uh, if you're used to these old-fashioned uh, torque converters, and they creep forward when you let off the gas. Electric cars don't do that unless you tell them to. So if you like that, you have to find it in the menu. Or, or if I'm lucky enough to have a seat massager, finding that in the menu can sometimes be hard as well. Uh, so not, not only is it generating the response, it can generate actions, right? It can just say, how nice it is, just turn it on for me, which always would frustrate me. If you can find it in the manual, why can't you do it? Right, you know, so I, I think that's going to be an exciting thing as, as, as you embed this in car. 
And another thing, I, I suggest you go by our booth. This is really fun, Torx Robotics. I was playing with this just yesterday. You can go out, and instead of, say, say you're doing an ADAS test run with a bunch of video, and cones are always like the, the anticipus of ADAS for a lot, a lot of times. They're getting better and better in that kind of case. But uh, as opposed to you want specific things you want to test with, you don't have to go through and sit there for 16 hours watching video. You can go into this product and say, show me all the cones. I was playing with it. You can go over there and say, show me all the conversions convertibles or show me all the Porsches or show me all the BMWs, it's great. It just brings them right up. It's really pretty amazing uh, that we can do this now, that kind of image search. And then also in the avatar space, we're partnered with uh, 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 Unreal uh, Engine and Epic and things like that. In the gaming space, uh, you can imagine that you can put generative AI behind these avatars and have really human photorealistic interfaces that people can interact with and the generative AI, say like Anthropic or something behind it, can uh, uh, speak to the customer as if it was uh, an actual person online that they're interacting with. So you're going to see those kinds of things. So how are these models really different? Uh, how have they, they changed over the years? So it used to be, or, or in, uh, even current with a lot of models, you do a lot of labeling yourself. There's a lot of manual input, and you generate huge amounts of labeled data, and you feed it into a neural network, and it goes through. Uh, and, and you generally train for one specific thing, like text processing, or image processing, or voice recognition, or Q&A, those kinds of things. With the, these new neural network transformer models, is what they're called, these, these large language models, you can train with a massive amount of data. So some of these models, for example, have 175 billion parameters. For those of you who don't understand generative uh, AI and neural networks, but do understand coding, I kind of think of that as like, uh, 175 billion if statements, that's one way to think of it. So he's just generating that rather than someone writing that. And that's a good way, to, it's a good analogy, it's not actually how it works, but it's a good analogy. Uh, and now what you can do is you can also add your own labeled training data to it. So you've got general data you've filled in and then specific data. And then it has agents or robots or, or, or uh, assistants, those are different terms that are used, but they all sort of mean the same thing. And this is going to change programming, too, because you're going to move from what we call service-oriented architecture today, which is how Amazon Web Service and other works, to what's called assistant-oriented architecture. And that's going to really be embedded in these systems. So what are the kind of use cases? Uh, uh, Wendy covered a few of them, but you're going to see you know, customer experience, these avatars, these interactions, the, the, even the in-car asking and responding questions. You're going to see employee productivity. Like I said, it's going to be like spell check. It's going to be just in, involved in everything you do, whether you're doing business intelligence or designing cars. Uh, especially, I think, in the creative content area. So architects and engineers and, and uh, uh, you know, the people who design products are going to be very involved with it, you know, cycling with it, just like they would do, like I said, with, 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 with current digital technology that they work with. And in the business operations side, things like maintenance and those kinds of things, rather than searching manuals for the error code or what could possibly cause it, uh, you'll get it right away. Uh, you know, you'll have avatars and assistants to help you in that space and to really accelerate things. So when you really want to unlock the value of it, here's the things you want to look for in, in, in someone you're going to work with around generative AI. So first of all, you want access to best of class models. The examples I gave you were all different models running as part of Bedrock, which we'll talk about. But it isn't going to be one model to rule them all. It's just not. So you want to have many model options. You want to make sure it's secure and private. You want to be able to train it with your intellectual property, but make sure your intellectual property stays with you and doesn't go to your competitors or the internet. Uh, you want to remove the heavy lifting. Uh, there's a huge amount of compute power behind these. You should be able to just you know, click a button, have very low latency, and go with it. So this is why we built Amazon Bedrock. So Amazon Bedrock provides for you this accelerated development of AI. Uh, it provides an accelerated development environment with agents that are pre-set up. And all of your data is private. It stays within your virtual private uh, 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 cloud on AWS, it never leaves those environments when you enhance the models specifically to those areas. So your intellectual property is always secure. 
We have a number of, of very compelling models. So for example, uh, uh, the stability AI, the stable diffusion is what I use to generate the sports car. Uh, uh, Anthropic, Claude 2 is what I use for that interactive component. Uh, and we'll talk more about how each of these are used. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about Anthropic is it'll handle over 100,000 tokens. So you can feed in uh, thousands of pages of text or even whole books to it, and it can analyze it and operate on it, uh, which is really exciting uh, kind of interacting with that and, and giving those prompts, right? And then we have a whole series of other models, like work we do with Meta or Cohere or, or uh, uh, you know, even the Alexa models and things like that that are available uh, in our uh, SageMaker platform. So I think it's important to, to note that, and, and I, I wouldn't imagine there'll be less models in the future. There's just going to be more so that you have more choice. So what is it like to get started with this? Uh, well, you start with a prompt, uh, uh, and then, then you give it some context, and then you choose your model, and you get an output. So basically, you're going through, and you're saying, so I have a customer that's considering leaving. Uh, um, you, know, you know, what should I do? I'm a call center person. What should I do? So you fed in the context on top of the, the general model, the LLM, and you've added you know, all the call transcripts of history and all the results, and then you have a database of that, and then you've added in this call transcript that's going on, and then you pick your model. You might pick Titan, or you might pick Claude, or Jurassic, uh, depending upon languages and things like that, and then you get an output on what to do. Uh, and that's the kind of help that's going to be going on uh, uh, as we move forward. But, you know, Bedrock really makes it easy to do all of this, um, and it's going to change a lot of things. Like, for example, software-defined vehicles are really important. In fact, we're, world, we're moving to a world of software-defined everything, software-defined factories, software-defined buildings, software-defined cars, all of that stuff. And so the ability to generate code is another important piece of generative AI. And so we released a product called Code Whisper, which we use internally, and a lot of customers are using it as well now. And it can generate code in real time. It's, it's really exciting for developers. They just put a, a comment in the code of what they want to do, and then it generates the code. Uh, it can also scan for vulnerabilities. Uh, it can also give you examples of where, hey, I, I'm seeing open source in the code that you may or may not want there, depending upon what your requirements are. So let me give you an example here. So in this first example, I just said, in the comment, uh, uh, convert a JSON file to a comma-delimited file. And it just writes the code there for me to do it, which is great. That's a, such busy work for a developer, right? So why not just have generative AI do it? Or in this example, I say, OK, now take that file and put it in our object storage system for me. So rather than me writing that, which of course I could write, but, but why? I've got other things to do. Uh, and so it can generate that code for me immediately. Or for example, I can say, now, yeah, those marketing people, they want you know, a bunch of products and price information on an HTML file. I can just you know, have it write that code as well. So it's really sped up and made my day happier and everything as a developer, and I can really focus on the things that differentiate my company, not on building arrays and writing to files and file conversions and those kinds of things. So companies like Accenture and, and, and SmugMug and others are jumping on this and using it, uh, and, and they're seeing things like 20 to 50% faster uh, code development in their companies as they do it. And this is going to be important uh, for, for software-defined vehicles. I don't know how many of you have ever pr programmed in CAN bus. I have, and it isn't easy. So having it generate CAN bus would be a good thing. But we're also integrating it with all of our BI tools. Uh, so our BI tools uh, then have the ability to analyze the data and allow you to prompt and ask questions to it, as opposed to just looking at a graph. Or it can generate a report that's summarizing it for you that you can go through and edit and then and give your final report up, up to the front office, if you like. But in software-defined vehicles, and I, I was uh, uh, going around the, the, the floor uh, yesterday, I uh, stopped by one of our partners, which is uh, uh, Con Continental, and they have uh, 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 this great software-defined vehicle system they've built on AWS, and a lot of our customers are building those. So Amazon has uh, on AWS these Graviton processors, which are ARM processors that are very scalable and very high performance and very low cost, and they're binary compatible with runs in the car. 
So that allows you to build your entire workbench and everything on the cloud and scale it. Uh, and then once you're happy with your code, after you've done testing, you can push it to the vehicle. So we have products that will help you push it to the vehicles, products that will help you connect the vehicles and store it in the data lake. But you end up with this cycle where you, you, you write your code, you test your code, you push it to the vehicle, the vehicle generates more data, then you take your next release of code and do it again. And every cycle, the, the code gets better and better because it's using more and more data. And then you can leverage generative AI to generate you, you know, edge cases for ADAS and those kinds of things that would be too hard to generate yourself. Uh, and, and, and learn from it and those kinds of things. But this cycle in the cloud and doing all your development in the cloud just really speed things up. So you can do now spawning out lots of these software-defined vehicles in the cloud. Uh, they're kind of like you know the movie The Matrix. The, the software doesn't know it's running in a virtual environment, right? Just like the people didn't at the time. So it could run out and you can create these virtual simulated environments and run millions of miles in an hour in the cloud that you could never test in the physical world. So we provide, for example, a nice a virtual engineering workbench, which, which allows people to build their initial workbench and test their software-defined vehicle. Uh, we provide Code Whisperer to help accelerate and develop the code. Uh, we provide Fleetwise, which allows you to have an in-car component that does a secure, connected over their update. It does machine learning model management. It does a whole bunch of things for you, along with creating that data lake. Uh, and then we provide, of course, Bedrock, which I've mentioned to help with the generative AI component. So let's walk through one of these use cases. So um, uh, I'm going to prompt it. I want an electric sports car with 500 horsepower uh, that's got a leather interior. So let's see what Anthropic says that car is going to be. So uh, it goes out and it creates this output. Uh, and it's, it's the EV500, it's named it, it's a convertible because I specified that. Notice I said electric specifically as opposed to the other sports car that ended up being gas. Um, at zero to 16, under three and a half seconds, you know, I don't know, I might have to go back and add more horsepower. I like like two and a half seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of addicted to electric cars and that low, that, that super low zero to 60 time. So we might have to cycle on that a bit. But you can see it's just generated that for me. So I go over to Stable Diffusion and, and, and say, well, what would it look like? And now it's generated the car. And if you look closely, there are no exhaust pipes. It's interesting this time, uh, it hasn't added brake ducts to it. I might, might go back as a designer and add the brake ducts in, in that space for cooling and those kinds of things. But it's generated a pretty nice sports car. And you can kind of see design language for many things. So I could imagine if I was Porsche, I could say do it in the Porsche design language or, or whichever ever, ever manufacturer I could be. Uh, and I get this nice production photo. That's you know, a pretty nice looking car already. Uh, it's interesting too, I notice with these generative AIs, whenever you say sports car, it always does the rear quarter view. And I think that's because that's all you're gonna see because it's so fast that you'll never see anything but the back of it. And I think that's a marketing thing that it's picked up, learning from us, because that's what it's doing. It's in, in, ingesting all of this data. Um, so now I want to say, well, let's put it in a nice background because that's not a very good background. What would it look like in a, a background uh, with Munich, and it generates that for me. And then I can go to Jurassic on Bedrock and say, hey, I want to write a product announcement. Uh, so that'll be easy. I can put it out in a nice product announcement out there, uh, and it generates the product announcement. Uh, feel the wind in your hair, you know, 500 horsepower, or not enough horsepower for me, but for lots of people, that's great. <laughs> um, and uh, it also generates the hashtags for you. And then I'm going to go over to another model, which is Titan, and I'm going to uh, generate, well, I want to generate for uh, all the search terms so it'll show up really fast when anyone searches on it. So it goes out and it generates the search terms for me. So you can see how much this has sped up my process, right? Uh, obviously, this is all human-guided, and you have to use your own judgment with it, right? And I think that's an important point, too. Just like any other technology, you need to use your own judgment. Just like when you're driving, you're using your own judgment. And, and that gives you an example there of where you can use these different models. So what else does it take to do generative AI? This does use a lot of computing power. Uh, so you need a deep global infrastructure of high-performance compute and a lot of storage. 
uh, and a broad selection of models uh, and a broad selection of hardware silicon acceleration for those models. Uh, and of course, you want to do it on something like AWS where our data centers are all powered by green electrons. Uh, it's another important piece to maintain, be sustainable. We have a lot of years of silicon knowledge and a lot of years of partnership. So we have a 12-year partnership with NVIDIA and a lot of the H100s out there are available for you today uh, for GPU-based acceleration. Uh, and then we have our own silicon that specifically accelerates machine learning models. Uh, uh, so Trainium is for training and uh, Inferentia is for running the models. And so in both cases, those do it at a lower power footprint uh, and, and accelerate specific models that where the silicon can really work to do it. Uh, and of course, we already have a bunch of customers running on, on training in Ferengia where they're taking advantage of the lower cost and high performance. We also have a huge number of customers that run on our NVIDIA-based GPUs as well. So our goal is to have everything you need to accelerate your generative AI journey. A, a good selection of foundational models, uh, a purpose-built silicon and purpose-built massive storage and massive compute to be able to handle this uh, that's running in a, in a green data centers. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, everything needed in the tools to, to enhance your productivity there. So we look forward to partnering together and letting you build on our innovation and innovating together here. Like I said, I'm very excited to see all the work being done on software defined vehicles and ADAS here at the show. I'd like to welcome Wendy on stage to, to wrap things up here. Thanks to everyone. Thank you, Bill. You can imagine how fun it is to spend days with him and really stretch your imagination on what is possible. Throughout my tenured experience in the automotive industry, I have to say, this is simply the most exciting time ever. As I meet with customers, I continuously hear three trends that are top of mind for them in conversation regarding the challenges in adopting AI. People, process, and capability. AWS is ready to use our deep technical experiences and knowledge and our lived experiences working with customers around the world to help the industry as it redefines the industry's vision and your vision as our customers on the future of mobility. You may wonder, how can AWS help me? First, people. Companies say that they lack the skilled talent need to broadly adopt AI. AWS is helping customers to upskill the talent they already have through utilizing one of several mechanisms, including our ready-to-deploy services and solutions for scale, AWS professional services, or perhaps our incredible network of partners around the world. In fact, just this week, you may have seen that we launched our AWS Automotive Competency Program, highlighting specialized AWS partner offerings in services and software solutions in areas like autonomous mobility, software-defined vehicle, connected mobility, sustainability, and more. In fact, MongoDB is one of our competency launch partners you perhaps saw this week as well. And they help customers to unlock innovative use cases to deliver next-generation vehicle experiences. In fact, I invite you to our booth to see the demos they have and the great technology they are offering to our customers as well. AWS also has training tools to give you hands-on experience. AWS AI Academy or AWS Generative AI Center of Excellence or the Generative AI with Large Language Models course that you can now find on Coursera. Second, process. Companies also believe they lack the back-end support for what feels like a monumental undertaking when they look to bring together their disconnected data. 
AWS can help drive effectiveness across organizations by improving data sharing capabilities and ensuring that we're keeping your data safe and your security top of mind. And lastly, capabilities. Some companies that I speak to are really afraid that they would not be able to make good use of their investments on AI, even as they build new applications. Today, we have covered just a few AI and generative AI use cases from the customer journey to improving the quality of new software-defined vehicle applications. But these are simply the tipping point of what is possible and how companies are already utilizing AI. AI. At AWS, we are absolutely on a mission to help the industry tackle its most pressing challenges. And we're helping companies to redefine their vision for the future of mobility and how they want to contribute and to enable and actualize faster transformation through powerful collaboration. I am excited about the momentum that's building, but so much opportunity that is in front of us. AWS has the path to help you get to your future vision quickly. Again, we believe the industry's only way forward is together. Thank you for joining us today.